Well, yeah. I don't have much. No, let's just wrap up. Yeah, this has been the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, subscribe and, and like us and rate us. That was ugly, Rube. That was a low point. Yeah, not just of the season, but that that's the low point of the Nick Sirianni era. Clearly. As, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, just a disastrous loss. 35-31 to the hapless Arizona Cardinals. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan, Ruben Frank, Dave Zangaro. Um, yeah, I, I thought they'd win this game. I thought they'd win it convincingly. I looked at that. You look at that roster of the Arizona Cardinals. It's one of, if not the worst roster in the entire league. They've somehow won three games before today, and I don't know how they did that. Uh, so to lose to that team after taking a 21-6 lead into the half is pathetic. That's what they've been doing all year. And before the game, I made my list of of double-digit leads the Eagles have had this year. There's eight of them coming into today. They've lost two of those games. They've won two by 10 or more points. So now when they have a double-digit lead, they're more likely to lose than to win by double digits. There's something missing here. There's something wrong with this team. I don't think it has anything to do with talent. They have some good players. They have a lot of good players. Um, Arizona, I mean, the Eagles, Arizona's best player or their fifth best player is probably about equal to Eagles' 30th best player. Mm -hmm. If you want to compare rosters, I mean, it's it's not even a fair fight. But one team, there's just something corrupt in there. There's something wrong. They just... um, There's a crack in the foundation. Yeah, they don't know how to... They don't know how to sustain games. They don't know how to put teams away. They don't know how to be consistent. They don't know how to make big plays at big moments. Um, there's something really, really wrong here. And I'm not sure how you fix it because I don't know exactly what it is. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the key. If it was one thing, you can fix it. There's more than one thing wrong here. Yeah, I mean, I think it's personnel. I think it's coaching. I think it's personalities. I think it's um, – I think they're worn down. I think that's part of it. Um but this was a Super Bowl team last year. I mean, they were ten and one um, a month and a half ago, and to to go one and four in your next five, and especially, you know, you could kind of rationalize and justify the the Seahawks game and and those three, um, the Giants. You know, you really started. I mean, they could have easily lost that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really started to see it coming apart. Um, I mean, I picked the Eagles to win by two just because I can't. I just can't picture them blowing anybody out right now because they just don't know how to do it. Um, but the biggest concern for me is I think there's so much that's wrong that I just don't know how you start to fix it. Especially, yeah. you got a playoff game in two weeks. Yeah, the uh, the hope of getting a bye is gone. Uh, it, it was crazy. They came into today with a legitimate, like the worst you thought, all right, they're going to win these last two games and get the two seed. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, after all things th- that we've seen, and the one seed wasn't completely out of the question. They, yeah. It was still a possibility. Right. So to go from that to now you're gearing up to be on the road, in, in and that's not a guarantee, but you're, you're probably going to be on the road in in the first round of the playoffs. I mean, that's an epic collapse. Yeah, it's it's one of the biggest collapses in football history, honestly. To be ten and one, and I'll have to do some research on teams that were ten and one and um, and finished out a season this way. And you know, I mean, but uh, it's uh, it's certainly in the Eagles history. It's uh, I mean, the nineteen eighty one team was six and zero, and I think they ended up not making the playoffs. But um, Eagles were the best team in football not that long ago. They might be one of the worst right now. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, if if you can't be that team, there, there's not a team in the league that you feel confident they can beat. Carolina, maybe I don't even know. They probably lose to them. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this the Cardinals are one of the worst teams. In the it's a bad result for them, too. <laughs> I mean, this is a team that's trying to get a high draft pick. Yeah. Well, one thing, I mean, they they've played hard all year for Gannon, mm-hmm. and that's been a consistent. Um, his message is getting through. I don't know if the other coach's message is getting through. Yeah, it, it's time to have a difficult conversation about Nick Sirianni, who has already, like, they're in the playoffs this year. So three straight years with a playoff appearance. They got to the Super Bowl last year, came very close to winning it. But this is bad. And I don't know if it's bad enough to get him fired. I think that's probably ahead of ourselves a little bit, but... This is bad, and it's bad to the point where there are going to be significant changes if this ends the way we think it's going to end. Yeah, I agree. And 
I can't imagine him getting fired a year after a Super Bowl, but I mean, we, we've seen it. Um, uh, I mean, it, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, Doug was what? How many years after? A few. Three, three and, years. And it was like there, you know, that. But they had kind of collapsed the last few yeah, years under him. Yeah, and then it twenty was, a was steady, a, steady decline, a disaster. Um, but if they if they go down to Tampa and lose twenty eight to ten. I, I think you got to really look at everything. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think Jeff Lurie's not going to change coaches. And I think Nick Sirianni has shown that, you know, he's, I mean, he's got a pretty good body of work. You get to the playoffs three years in a row, your first three years as a head coach, that's pretty good. Um, they've won most of their games. Um, but the way it's falling apart, just really, I mean, they're not just losing games. I mean, they're getting embarrassed on a weekly basis. And let's face it, they haven't played. They haven't played a good game. I mean, they blew that Seattle game. They had a big lead there. They almost blew the Giants game. They had a 17-point lead, and they were scrambling in the final seconds. Uh, when's the last time they played a complete game? It was, I guess, Miami. Miami was a good win. It was week seven. Yeah. I mean, Cowboys before the bye was a, a solid team win against a good team. Go back to the Rams game <laughs> week yeah. five. I mean, this is yeah. this is what we're looking at now. Yeah. You've yeah. lost four or five. And I think a lot of what we're seeing is things that we kind of saw earlier in the year, but either we, you kind of like, well, they'll fix that mm -hmm. or, you know, that's kind of fluky. You know, they can clean up the turnovers, the run defense will get better. I mean, um, but to me, like the Giants game was like, all right, there's some very real problems here. I yeah. still think they can beat the Cards and the Giants, but there's some real problems here. But they didn't even do that. I was in the locker room after the game. Very, I was very curious to see what this locker room would be like because last week was a win that felt like a loss. I thought we were headed for that again this week, and then they end up actually losing the game. Uh, just talked to a bunch of players who, to be honest, don't seem to have answers. Uh, you know, I, I didn't talk to every player, of course. Brandon Graham has been through enough of this to say the right things. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get this fixed. Kind of, it, it's like the script, right? It's like, yeah. we we have faith in everyone. We're going to get this fixed. Uh, but there are other players who have no answers. I talked to Hassan Reddick. I asked him like four different questions and he was like, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, and I, I don't think he was alone. Uh, didn't get a chance to talk to Devontae Smith after the game. He was injured. We'll talk about that. In a minute, I was curious of, of his assessment of the offense. He was so critical last week. And look, I don't think the offense was the biggest culprit in this sure. game, certainly. But um, there's plenty of fault to go around on this deal. You know, th there are plays that the offense could have done better. Uh, to me, though, like defense and coaching are why they lost this game. Yeah. And I, I do my position by position grades. The first thing I did this week was write in an F under coaching. And that's only because there's nothing there's nothing lower. <laughs> F, I once got an F minus 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 on a map quiz. A map? Yeah, we had in, in journalism in, we had a map quiz on the Middle East and I got an F minus 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 minus. And I had a hunch we were going to get the same test the next day so I spent the whole night like learning mm -hmm. every country. We had the same test the next day and I aced it. Okay. So maybe that's a good sign. Well, if maybe they play the Cardinals tomorrow they'll, <laughs> they'll win. Uh maybe if if uh Nick Sirianni's tested on the Middle East, like where's the Sudan? Maybe maybe, maybe it'll be okay. But yeah, I I if there's anything lower than an F, I would go there. Um because this is, they were not prepared to play. And I know they built a 15 point lead, good for them. But look, if, you know, if Sidney Brown didn't, they would have scored on every drive if he didn't have that pick six, which was, well, we'll get to that. But um, save something for the positivity. Corner save, at there's the not end. a whole yeah. lot there. Um, but I, I just saw a team that, I saw a team that every time, every time there was like a challenge to them, like, all right, how are they going to respond here? They responded poorly. Especially on defense. Now on offense, they did have that one touchdown drive when they really needed it. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, later in the game, they, we'll, we'll get, get to, to that, that series. Yeah. But uh, that was a disaster. And, and we talk like complimentary football is such a big deal. And you look at the possessions in a game like that's that that's really what football comes down to is what do the possessions look like? How many do you get? How do you maximize them? And the Cardinals got they maximized their possessions. They scored on all of them in the second half. 
And the Eagles- And they were all drives of 70 yards or more. And that's the thing, that that limited the Eagles' possession. Yeah. So then, you know, they're left with limited opportunities and they didn't make the most of them when they had the, the chances. So it, that's that's what this game comes down to. And when you're up, you know, when you're down 15 points, and I, I think I said this on the pregame, Gannon, they'll, they'll just keep running. They don't care what, what they'll just keep running, mm -hmm. running the clock, and they did, and it worked. Um, I thought Gannon really understood this team's weaknesses, how to attack them. And it's almost like he kind of knew they were going to fall apart if if they just kept hammering. It was them. nice of the Eagles to honor him by playing that second half like it was a Super Bowl all over again. It's incredible. I mean, it, it was a repeat of the Super Bowl, and he was on the opposite sideline. Right. The only difference was, was no Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. It was Kyler Murray and a receiving core that- You ever heard of Gorch, Gorch. before? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a decent player, but I mean, they were without Hollywood Brown Gorch, in this Gorch game. Gorch had 15, what did he have, 15 catches all year? Couldn't stop him. What's his name? Greg Dorch. Oh, it's got a T in there. Mm -hmm. Greg Dorch, undrafted from from Wake, had 184 yards coming in. What do you have, 82 today? Yeah, seven for 82. Yeah, I mean, it was a bunch of no names. But again, it's like I've been saying, it doesn't. it's not about who they're playing. It's about them. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree. And, and I think we've seen that for a while now. Do you worry that this is... I, this is going to sound dramatic, but kind of the beginning of the end for Sirianni? I don't know. I mean, I, I think he'll get at least next year. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's I think he's done enough to, to earn I, that. I agree with that. I You know, I, I think you have to, like, it's not crazy to talk about it, but I think you're right. But, you know, I, I mean, certainly if what we've seen over the last six weeks is what we see next year, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. normally for for Jeffrey to fire a coach, it normally takes like a season long disaster. Yeah, this has only been a month and a half long mm -hmm. catastrophe. Yeah, um, and Nick's a nice guy, and Jeff likes Nick, and Nick's you know Nick's a good um, like that. That's my point. Like Chip, yeah, they're they're, they're like personality issues were a part of. Yeah, that. no, that's that's for sure. But they're also, I mean, 2015 was a catastrophe, um, especially at the end, but. A, a lot of the things, most of this, most of that come down to like the end of 2015. We mm -hmm. start looking them up. Man, I'm so mad at, at Stathead for not having the score finder because you can't do most second and a half points allowed. Yeah. You can't do it. What is wrong with these people? I'm What's her name? Katie. Katie. Happy New Year, Katie. Fix it. Fix it now. <laughs> um, Give me that pen, by the way. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, here. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take the pen. Um. But no, it's a fair question. And he's always been able to kind of lead the team through whatever adversities come come up. And there hasn't been a ton of it, really. That's the thing. It's like most of last year, they were front runners. Things were easy. But I even include starting out 10 and 1 after the Super Bowl loss, after that, you know, I consider that dealing with adversity because most teams don't do that very well. Yeah, I guess so. But that's not like this. No, it's not. And, and 2021 is not like this because no. there no were no expectations. expectations. Right. And for a team that, that is talented, they have too much talent to play like this. They really do. Yeah. And defensively, uh, and we can start to talk about the defense, I think there are some holes talent-wise, but there's too much talent to get sliced and diced by that Arizona Cardinals offense. Yeah. There's just too much talent out there. Yeah. And... You, you make the switch a few games ago to Matt Patricia, which was a desperation move. I, I know the team has tried to spin it. That's a desperation move, and it hasn't worked. Um, it, this is a, a defense that has no answers, no identity. They're just out there, and I, I don't even think it's effort. I just think that they don't have any idea what they're doing. I think that's a fair characterization. Uh, I don't think it's effort either. Um I mean, it, it was the worst tackling I've seen all year. It was terrible. Uh, but just taking bad angles to the ball, um, you know, there were times where Connor would, he'd be running into, there'd be like three guys in the same place, like two linebackers in the safety, and he would just cut the other way. There's no one there. It's like, what are you doing? Like, there's no gap discipline. Um, there's no pressure, very little pressure, no edge pressure. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. 
But the cards drove down so easily, those four drives. There's no resistance. Here's a great stat for you. The cards, the cards had 32 first downs, as you know. So um, it's the most the Eagles have allowed since, uh, I don't know, it's in my 10 observations, a long time. But here's the great thing, not the great thing if you're the Eagles, but the great stat. In the second half, they ran 38 plays. They had 19 first downs. So half their plays in the second half were first downs. Yeah, and there was a That's period. Insane. There was a period in this game where the Eagles were really bad on third downs on defense. And then there were like two drives in a row where they, they didn't, didn't even face any. a third down. They didn't even face a third down. And that's that's like those Chiefs drives in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Two of those touchdown drives, they didn't have a th- they didn't have a third down. It, uh, it was a, a hot knife through butter. They they there was no resistance. Um it was alarming. It was as bad. I mean, there were some collapses in that ch- in the chip era. Uh, there were a couple in 2020, but um, I mean, the point total wasn't wasn't as high. I mean, it's not like they scored 50, but the fact that this was one of the worst. I mean, they're averaging 18 points and 309 mm. yards. Yeah, the Cardinals, the, their highest point total all season was 29 points. They did it in the second half today. Yeah, they they beat their yardage. I mean, they doubled their point average. Mm-hmm. They're averaging 18. They had what 35, whatever it was. Um, I've yeah, already 35. forgotten the score. 35 31. They've they were averaging 309 yards per game. They had 449. They're averaging um what is it, 18 first downs per game, and they had 32. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I and I don't think it mattered what they ran. I don't think the plays mattered. I think they just whatever they did, the Eagles were gonna just not be able to handle it. Matt Patricia had no answers. No answers. And they finally yeah, they take Connor out and Carter comes in. First, first carry is like twenty two yards. It's like, all right, now worry about him. Yeah, two hundred twenty one rushing yards. It's pathetic. And it wasn't even like if, if you were, if I were to tell you the Cardinals had over two hundred yards rushing, you would have gone, oh man, Kyler must have really well. Here's hit, killed them on the ground. He had twenty four. They had two hundred twenty one rushing yards without a run over twenty two yards. It just just kept hammering. Yeah, those those long drives. I mean, the, the longest drive the Eagles had faced all year defensively, I think, was seven minutes and fourteen seconds. The Cardinals had no problem, just long drive after long drive after long drive. Is there any any one guy? I don't think I don't think there is for me. Like usually, there's that one guy who just had an awful game. I think this is just everybody. I mean, is there anybody who kind of? Uh, I mean. I don't know if there's one guy who deserves like to be LVP. Out. Yeah, like I. Yeah. I mean, Josh Sweat could have changed the game if he finally got a sack. Yeah. I talked to him this week, and he told me he wasn't worried about the lack of sacks. And then you have a, a play that, like, you got to bring the quarterback down there. That's that's a big difference in this game. Yeah. He couldn't make it happen. I thought there were some good individual plays here and there on defense, but you know, I th- it, who had a good game really. There were some good plays. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. I can't say anybody in defense had a good game. Ojimo? He he showed up a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think he had any big time screw ups, but um, there's not one person I can say played well on defense. I think they have some young guys who are going to be players. Yeah. Probably not ready yet, or they're ready and they just have, they're going to make mistakes. I mean, at least Ringo and 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 Sidney Brown are at least they're making. Gosh, plays. I was uh, not the. It doesn't really matter. That was a terrible call. The Which DPI one? on Ringo. Oh my goodness! Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Um. Yeah, that was terrible. And it was funny from the press box, Mike. I thought the receiver pulled him down. Yeah. They just missed it. The refs, are, refs. Are, I mean, I don't think it was a poorly ref, uh, officiated game, but that was a egregious call. Um. Certainly, but. But I mean, yeah, it, they were you're playing anyway. a crappy team. If you can't get get past one bad call, yeah, you don't deserve the win. What? I mean, they're not going to go back, Gannon's or um, Gannon. God, Sirianni's not going to go back to Desai. You can't, you can't just keep changing defensive play callers. I don't think. Let's see what DJ Elliott's got. I'm telling you, uh, what do you DK do? DK McDonald, come on down. DK's done a nice job, secondary coach. What do you do? You got to live with it. I, I don't, there's no time. It that's the the frustrating thing when you hear players talk about. Yeah, it's a learning experience. We'll We're going to get it fixed. When it's January, <laughs> you, have, you have one regular season game left. This is who you are. Yeah, I think that's the 
That's the scary truth. This is who they are. No answers. I don't have the answers. They don't have the answers. No. I, I can tell you it's it, there's too much talent for it to look like this. Up front, they got one sack today. They have one or two. And uh, Jalen Carter, Jalen have one. Yeah, Jalen Carter had one. Was that the only one? I thought yeah. there was one other one. But um, I, w- one of my theories is that um, teams that bring in a lot of free agents in the, you know, like from other places – and, you know, I mean, Morrow, so, so many of these guys, Morrow and Byard, Roby didn't play today, but, you know, Cunningham and um, Shaq Leonard. Uh, you, you Each time you have one of these guys in a prominent spot, you lose a little bit of your culture. You know, these are guys that they weren't here in OTAs or camp. They haven't heard Nick's speeches. Um, I, I just think, you know, you you lose a little bit of what you've built. And I'm not saying... Those guys in particular were any worse than anyone else. They certainly weren't great. But, um, you know, Nick has, has worked so hard to build, you know, to build that culture and his all his core values and all that stuff. Um, and that's a lot of guys. And, you know, and there's guys on offense too, but the, all those guys are on defense. And that's where the that's where the real problems are. Um, I just wonder if that's that's part of this. Yeah, I don't know. It's, we're kind of. I don't use any one. Grass on your straws thing. too. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's one thing. I yeah. think they're gassed up front. Um, I think they're, I mean, their 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 playmakers are are. Older. They had to be gassed up front. I, I mean, they were on the field forty minutes. Though. I mean, just in general, this, oh, yeah. you know, the, over the last month and a half, um, they're they're old. Their older guys are kind of looking old, and their younger guys are kind of not ready. And um, it's just a bad combination. They had 449 yards of offense. And what did they have in the first half? Um, That's unbelievable. They had uh, 179 in the in the first half. Jeez. So they had, what, you know, almost 300 That's in the second crazy. half. This is one of the worst offensive teams in the league. Yeah. There are only players. It, it was a brilliant move by Gannon to get the onside kick. It was. Save time. They knew they'd get the ball back, and they knew they'd score. Yeah. When do we get? It's to funny talk- that he he understands how time works now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look back to the Super Bowl, and all they had they, like they should have let the Chiefs score quicker, and he yeah. like he didn't have that understanding of time he, then. He, he learned a lot from that. And now he like at this game, he he's like, yeah, wait a second. If if we let them score fast, then we'll get the ball back. Yeah. Um, that whole staff coached well. They had those guys ready and believing in themselves. That's so much of the battle. The, the cards players believed in themselves. They're not very good, but they believed. They kept battling. They kept fighting down 15. They didn't quit. The Eagles didn't put them away. And as soon as the team starts coming back and clawing back against this Eagles team, they fold. Yeah. I, I don't know why. That's, that's one of my biggest questions about this team is why they don't have the ability to put teams away. I don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, one word. They should I, have leadership. They have thing, four guys who have been here 10 plus years. They have a quarterback who seems to have all the leadership qualities you want. I mean, in general, when something like that happens, yeah, you wonder about their heart. That's just, and I'm not, I, I hate to even question a team's heart, but I mean, up 16 against the Patriots, they win by five. Up 20 against the Vikings, they win by six. So I'm saying, well, they got to finish teams out. Um, up 11 against the Jets, they lose. Up 11 against the Cowboys, they win by five. Up 10 against the Seahawks, they lose. Up 17 against the Giants, they claw, you know, have to scratch and claw just to win. They end up winning. Um, but, I mean, gosh, let's see. The last six times they've been up 10, they're three and three. Jets, Seahawks, and, and Cards. I mean, heart is the only thing. Just and it's like you know, you know, we've talked before about how sometimes a team will show that they can come back and win a game, and then they know they can do it for the next time. I wonder if it starts to creep into their mind. Here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah, as Dolly Parton sang so eloquently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here you come again. But um, yeah, I think there might be something to that. And know. that's doubt. That's self doubt, and you certainly sense that there's a lot of that out there. Yeah, there probably should be. When a team starts 
clawing back, they just fold. They yeah. just fold right up. Uh, a couple injury things before we take a break. Uh, Devontae Smith, this is not good. Saw him post game with a boot on his foot on crutches. We don't know the extent of it. Uh, he got hurt on on the Kenny Gainwell screen pass on that second to last possession, which we'll save that to talk about the offense on the other side. But that's the play he gets hurt. Uh, man, that they didn't they didn't have him on the final drive because of that. Right. Uh, so you know, we'll see. But if they don't have him for the playoffs, uh, that's a huge loss for this offense. And then hi, Quez. Uh, can you come back? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, Avante Maddox, I saw him walking toward the, uh, the x-ray room, kind of holding shoulder area. So it's a concern. That's a concern. Especially we know the coming back from the peck. So, uh, that wasn't good. I don't know if Shaq Leonard at the end of the game was an injury thing, but he wasn't out there. They had Ben Sumeran out there. Yeah. He, he did get hurt in this game. Jordan Davis ended up coming back. Right. He was okay. He was like walking around with a little limp in the locker room, but he was able to play. But the Devonte one is, is certainly the most concerning. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's, uh, let's take a break. We'll talk some offense and Dave's positivity corner on the other DPC. side. DPC. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Mortorano's Prime on Open Table. Offensively, Rube, like I, they did some good things. Sure, they did. Uh, certainly, the first possession of the game, three and out, that not was good. not good. That was not good. Uh, but then touchdown, touchdown on their other two possessions. Then they come out in the second half, three and out. And that was the one where Hertz hits uh, Devonte. Look, it was a tough catch. It's one that. Devonta has to make. Yeah, wasn't a perfect throw. Mm-hmm. Um, a little underthrown. It was. He had to track it. It was over the shoulder. It's a yeah. high difficulty catch. It's a. It's a catch he usually makes. Got to make it. Yeah. Got to stay on the field for not just for the offense, but for your defense. Um, that was a shame. Um, but then they come back and they get that big touchdown drive. That was huge. Yeah. Because at that moment they had, the the score was tied twenty one twenty one. So you're feeling pretty good now. After that onside kick, they get the ball back. You feel like all right. They're going to get a touchdown here. So the worst thing that can happen is the Cardinals have a chance to, to drive down and tie the game right. or maybe go for two, get a penalty, go for two and lose the game <laughs> like another team in the NFC. But for that drive to saw out and the way it stalled out, <laughs> back-to-back QB runs and then the screen pass to Kenny Gainwell. Well, before that, I mean, I think what really set the tone the for the was the Malata mm-hmm. um, holding penalty. And it looked like they could have gotten him or Dickerson on that play. And, you know, Swift, I didn't like the way Swift, I don't really like the way Swift ran today for the He was kick, like, kicking a lot of stuff outside when. I thought he was pretty good today. I mean. He had 44 yards on that touchdown drive. The, he was good before, on that drive. Right. I thought he was kicking a lot of stuff outside when he could have been going up the middle. He kind of re- like the Miles Sanders stuff. Really? I, yeah, I didn't I, see I, that as much. I sensed a lot of that. Um, and that was one of those plays that he kicked outside when I thought he he had some some room up the middle. I think he was trying to hit a home run. I think, I think when a team is struggling, guys try to hit home runs. They want to. You know, make the big play to to. I'll have to watch that play again. I, yeah, it's, it's just I don't think it's a huge thing, but I, I didn't like the play. I didn't like the concept of of it, but um, it was a bad. It was it was a bad penalty. I mean, he wasn't going anywhere anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at worst he should have had. You know, yeah, it was, and it's 10. a bad penalty, but we've seen them overcome a holding before, and you have a first and twenty. All right. Yeah. Right. I mean, what in the world are uh, they doing? Let's let's can we just. Bunch those two first two plays together, yeah. Because it sure. was they were both they looked looked like mirror images of each other or carbon copies, whatever. I don't know. They looked similar. Uh, they were both right tackle, mm-hmm. and they just had no just like no chance. Like, what are you doing? You at that point, I think we all knew they needed to score a touchdown to have a chance to win the game. And that's why it's like, are these coaches not watching the game? Right. 
We think we're going to... The gonna, defense, suddenly they're going to get a stop? You can't stop anybody. They haven't stopped them since the second quarter. You need a touchdown, and they played for a field goal. They played for a field goal. And and that's that's just pathetic, wimpy coaching. Absolutely agree. And that's as bad as it gets. And um, it was passive. It was... It, wimpy is a great word. Um, look, Jalen... Jalen's a... I mean, he's made some big runs, but I, I think... Again, it seemed to know how to bottle them up pretty much. And um, neither one of those plays had a chance to work. You've got, you know, well, they didn't have, uh, they had Devontae on that drive till the end of that drive, right? He got hurt on the, the third and long. Yeah. So they had him for those first yeah. two. So he was fine up until that that third down, uh, up until the field goal, really. He was fine on that drive. Um and then even the Gainwell pass, just that you, you're not going to get. What is it? I think it was third and nineteen at that point. Yeah, it just seemed like they were playing for like, oh, let's get Jake a few extra yards here. It it did. Look, I, I think that sometimes screens on on third and long situations make some sense, but it's the that defense doesn't scare you. It shouldn't scare you. The cornerback shouldn't scare you. Right. You've got AJ Brown. I know. You've got AJ Brown. I know. And you got AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. Take a chance, man. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You you had to you had to drive the ball down the field somewhere in that sequence. Probably three times. Yeah. AJ Brown, uh, there there was a shot of him after that looking visibly frustrated. We know uh he's an emotional guy. He he declined to speak with reporters after the game again. Um, he's frustrated. Yeah. And he clarified that him. he's like it's it's not about you guys, but I, I think he wants to keep himself out of a situation where he'll say something he regrets. And we know he's an emotional guy, wears his heart on his sleeve. And if he did talk, he would say something that he probably didn't want to say. Yeah. And I understand the frustration. Sure. I, I Because like, we can say that's a stupid play call and he probably wants to. Yeah. Uh, even Jalen was like, he was asked, do you think, you know, would you have liked to be I didn't, more? See, I missed Jalen because I was in the locker room. What, what okay. did he have to say about He was it? asked, um, would you have liked to have been more aggressive there? Mm. And he kind of paused and hesitated, kind of trying to figure out how to answer it. Uh, and then he just said something like, well, I'm happy just to call the whatever plays are called. Yeah. He had to hate that. I mean. And we've, like, I, I think we've tried to be as fair and balanced on Brian Johnson as possible. And and look, I, I think it is a little tricky because we don't know how much of it is Nick. Sure. On game days. like yeah, On how much is Jalen as well. Sure. Yeah. yeah it, it, that makes it really tricky. So it's really easy to say, fire Brian. We think that's that's his decision there. It might be Nick saying play for the field goal. Yeah. I, I, I'm just thinking, I know Nick's nature is, it, it tends to skew... Conservative Passive. times. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know enough about Brian Johnson to know his nature. Um, I kind of thought he was kind of aggressive. Um, but yeah, there's no way for us to know. But whoever it is, um, that was it was just awful play calling. It was an awful concept. The whole sequence, the whole drive, or the whole um, series of downs there, once you got the first down, um, that cost you the game. I, I, I said to Jaws, was, Jaws was down in the studio, but I said, if they kick a field goal here, they're losing this game. I think everyone sensed that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were watching- Except the coaching staff. Except the coaching staff. I mean, there's plenty of time left. Time wasn't, time wasn't going to yeah, be Yeah, that, and that's the reason they probably onside kicked it. Yeah. Either you get the ball and you, you bleed the clock and you you walk away with, with the win, or the, the Eagles score one way or the other and you get a chance to have another possession. Yeah. What did uh? I, so I I also miss Nick Sirianni being in the locker room. That's that's we've talked about it before. Just so I know you know, but the audience like I'm in the locker room with our TV camera getting sound for the post game show. So I, I typically, thank you for that. Yeah, I typically don't get to go to whoever is at the podium unless Jalen is well after everyone, which right. happens quite a bit. Um, so I miss Nick. What what was his before you even tell me what he said? What was his like mood? In general, or just on those on that sequence. In general, um, defiant. You know, we'll be fine. We just got to fix some things, clean some things up. We 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 have people here. Um, you know, we yeah. ha we have the you know the coaches and the players here to win, and uh, we just got to clean some things up. And um, yeah, I mean, 
just what you always expect. Yeah. How about on uh, that offensive series? He said, I mean, he said Gannon was was blitzing, and that's one of our answers to the blitz. I mean, the screen pass? No, the first two. Oh. The two runs. Um, that's even more of a of a reason to throw the ball because, I mean, those are opportunities. And I know Jalen's not the best in the league against the blitz. And but they're certainly not the best in the league when it comes to giving him answers for the blitz. That's fair. Um, but I think your best chance there is – um, look, you're on the you're you're on the thirty yard line. For crying out loud! I mean, you're on the twenty before the before the penalty. But oh, this is a, so. This is a good question. Yeah. Um, where you? He was asked if you were playing for a field goal. Right. And who asked that? I couldn't. It was Kemsky. Okay. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, he said he doesn't think it's conservative if they're blitzing a bunch of gaps there. Yeah. He was asked what you know why why he was so conservative there. He mm-hmm. said I didn't think it was conservative. That's it was. Yeah, either he's doing a really bad job covering for his OC or I kind of feel like it was him. Like he's... And then he even said, we've got to get ourselves into range. Yeah. I mean, they were in range, they were in Jake Elliott range the whole freaking yeah. Now drive. That, that is, look, that's the tough end. It's the open end of the stadium. Yeah, I know. It was a little windy. It was windy and you could see it on his kickoffs. Uh, they didn't have the leg they typically do um, to the point where like, you think, are they, are they angling kicks? And you go, no, that's just the way the wind's going. In this game. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hated that that sequence. Yeah. Um, I mean, and they didn't have any timeouts at the end either because they right. blew them earlier. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say about the offense. Um, you know, I thought Jalen- Just for limited the, possessions in this they, game because the defense couldn't get off the field. It's so few plays. Um, the, the, what'd you make of the early three and out? They get a couple of good runs and then- um, Incompletion. Of oh, the first drive of the game? Yeah. Oh, of their first drive. The yeah, the Eagles. It was, it was yeah, certain oh, two. Yeah. Um, I know people want them to run the ball. I'm okay. Um, it's just call a better play. Yeah. Then they had touchdown, touchdown. We talked about, it's just like they have possessions in this game. They just didn't have any plays. And what do they have? 47 plays? So, I don't have it in front of me. Um, I thought Jalen was fine. Yeah, I thought he was okay. Like, um, I, certainly not their biggest problem. And that's concerning because, I mean, for the last year and a half, when Jalen's played well, they've won. Mm-hmm. Jalen played well, and they did yeah. not win. 72 plays for the Cardinals, 47 for the Eagles. A difference of 25 plays. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's tough to really evaluate the offense when uh, when you don't have that many plays, but that sequence really, that's what bothered me the most. Yeah, it, it was their chance and they blew it on offense. Yep. And the, the penalty was huge. I don't want to like forget about that. It, it it did put them in a tough spot to the point where like, yeah, you do have to try to like make sure you're not out of field goal range. You got to get some points, but I didn't like the, the way they turtled. Yeah. That's a good word for it. That's what they did. Mm-hmm. All right. DPC? Dave's Positivity Corner. Who gets Sidney Brown? Go ahead. You want him? Go ahead. Young, um, <laughs> longest interception return, um, a touchdown ever by an Eagles rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, the previous long was 87 yards by somebody named Caffey. I forget his first name. In okay. 1963. Um, yeah, it was a nice play. And I like the way he just kind of attacked the right sideline. Uh, he made a nice move on that. Yeah, he did. He he he. It wait. was it was Rondell Moore at the end. Yeah, got through some traffic. Got a couple of nice blocks there, mm-hmm. um, and that was good. And they needed that because they were going to score. So that was you know I think that's a fourteen point turnaround. I thought the game was well. After what we've seen, you never think the game's over. But that was a huge play potentially. It's a shame for him because that that's the play of the game. Otherwise, yeah. they win this game. Sure. Uh, he this is fun. So next gen stats had him at twenty one point five two miles per hour. The fastest Eagles ball carrier in over two seasons. Really? Does not get bragging rights in the family. Earlier oh, really? this season, Chase Brown, his twin brother, reached 22.05 miles per hour, the second fastest ball carrier time in the NFL this year. Didn't Quez have some really high numbers a couple of years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, so that was that was that was good to see. And 
Um, first time two Eagles rookies have had their first career interception in back-to-back weeks since 1987. Okay. Cedric Brown and Jerome Brown. No relation, obviously. <laughs> um, so that's cool. And that gives you kind of- How about Cedric, Jerome, and Sydney? Are there any relatives between all the Browns? Oh, um, um, Dr. Brown Soda. <laughs> Uh, so like, you know, you see some of these young kids show up and, 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 you know, that's nice to see, but there are, there's a, you know, there's a downside of that as mm-hmm. well, but we're, we're on the positivity corner. So, so I'll go with that. Uh, also the third longest interception return in Eagles history behind Lido, 101 yards against Dallas in 04 and 102 yards against Dallas in 06. Yeah. First. Vinny- Vinny it's Testaverde the longest in since, 04, uh, Drew Bledsoe in 06. Since Malcolm in 15? Yeah. Well, Patriots? he had 99. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That was up in uh, Foxborough, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brady got Brady for ninety nine. Got Brady. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's a start there on Dave's positivity corner. You're up. Um. <laughs> gosh, there's not a lot to choose from. There, there really isn't. Um, I th- like yeah. Oh, I go. Well, let me try to think. Of okay. One. Um, I, I will say Swift on that uh, on that drive, and because he he topped a thousand yards in right. his career, I, I've been pleasantly surprised by him for most of the year. And um, it's funny that you mentioned the dancing a little bit. I I I think he's done that way less than I anticipated. I do too. Him coming from Detroit. I just noticed it today a few times. Okay, that I haven't noticed it. But. Um, maybe they were just bottling him up, but especially on that drive, like and he'll finish runs pretty strong too. The lower shoulder, he'll oh, get yeah. a few extra yards. So uh, I've been impressed by his physicality, and and forty four yards on that drive was huge. Yeah, it was. You think there's any chance he's back next year? Maybe. I mean, there weren't like no one, none of the running backs got big contract except for Miles Sanders, and yeah. if anything, that contract's going to lead to fewer. I big mean, all those back guys contracts. that were protesting the salaries, you know, and Miles wasn't really very vocally. He did bring it up but that's because I mean, he got paid saquon and uh <laughs> he's but, the only guy who got paid hey, but i mean he he was part of that conversation mm-hmm. um in general uh saquon and jonathan taylor and mm-hmm. i mean all those none of those guys are having good years but anyway um i'll give you julio oh, okay that's good julio had a couple to his uh oldest player oldest eagle with two touchdowns since irving fryer and i think before that pete retzlaff had a a two touchdown game at 35, but you know, been looking for that third receiver and Quez is out of the picture. I did. I didn't even see OZ uh, play a whole lot of offense. No, I saw him on special teams. I saw him on special teams. Um, but it looks like moving forward I and mean, he, heck, he might be number two, um, depending on what's up with Devante. Yeah. A little scary, but good sign from him. But it's good to see. And he I, has nine catches and three touchdowns. Yeah. And that, that, that second touchdown was, you know, ball got deflected by our, our old friend Andre Sachere. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had to adjust a little bit, and then he was physical getting in the end zone. Yeah, it was good to see. Yeah, and so. it's funny because like in his career, he hasn't scored a ton of touchdowns. It's actually like the one stat that right. isn't up to par. I think yeah. he has like sixty six now 66 in his career, six now, which is pretty low for. I mean, he has he has fewer touchdowns in his career than Stefan Diggs. Like he doesn't he doesn't get in the end zone that much. So it's funny that he comes here and. He's been really good getting yeah. in the end zone. Um, yes, yeah, his first two touchdown games since 2020. Mm-hmm. So, so good for him. Yeah, uh, my turn. I'll give you the uh, the Kenny Gainwell throw. Yeah, off the uh, the tush push look, which is kind of funny because the tush push to me didn't make sense there because they, that would have you needed the clock to stop and you wouldn't get enough yards there. Yeah, but it was it, it worked because they collapsed it and Gainwell does have a, a good arm lefty. It was nice to see a lefty out there. Keith Byers. Throwing the football Keith, you around. Know, nobody ever expected Keith Byers to throw because he was holding the ball in his left mm-hmm. hand. And even though everyone kind of knew he's left-handed. You kind of forget in the moment. Yeah, in the moment. And um, yeah, so I like that play. And It wasn't a great throw, but um, it wasn't. Devontae made it right. Yeah, he did. But um, yeah, can we know game. And they did that in um, training camp. Joint practices with the Colts. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the play that Nick Springs on his former coordinators. Yeah, I like that. Do you think he called Steichen before the game? Like, watch what I do to JG. I think he probably did. Yeah, yeah. And JG called Steichen and said, "Watch what I do to Nick." <laughs> <laughs> Gonna gut him. 
Yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, anything else? No. Uh, saw Bo well, Allen. I do have one other thing. Okay. Well, no, we'll talk about it Tuesday. All right. Saw Bo Allen. Good yeah, I saw him. Bo. Yeah. Looked good. Yeah. Good looking hair on him. His hair is longer than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's all I got, Dave. Yeah. I, I meant to mention this. this is, we're done with positivity. Uh, weird and active today. Bradley Roby. Roby inactive. Marlon Tui Pelotu inactive. They had Rashad Penny up and didn't use him. Strange. Yeah. Why not have an extra defensive lineman if you're going to have a running back up who doesn't play? Uh, I was wondering the same thing. Didn't make any sense. Yeah. Penny never got on the field. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's like, it's so far down on the list of like, right. issues, but it, it struck me as weird. It doesn't, I don't get it. Yeah. Nor I. Okay. I just don't. A lot of things I don't get. And that's about 50th on the list. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what a way to end this year. Uh, but it's a little awkward now because of how bad this was, but we, we love you guys. And, and thanks we for, do. uh, for listening all year long. If you enjoy the podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click that, click that like button and subscribe there as well. Happy new year, everyone. Yeah. Happy new year. Uh, enjoy responsibly. Be safe. Be safe out there. Have some fun. Try to have some fun. I, I feel like it's probably a damper in the city right now, but we well, made it through well, another Mother's year. Parade tomorrow. I'll be a little pick me up. Yeah. Ha what percentage of people now, if they want, it'd probably be a higher percentage. We're out here in this parking lot tailgating who are going to make it through the game, through the night, and keep it going for New Year's Day. Well, I think a lot of them are just staying in the parking lot and they're just going to go right up to the parade. We saw that uh, small child in the Jason Kelsey Mummers costume. That oh, was yeah. the highlight of my day. Okay. That was good. Uh, the bus wasn't back. You know that bus that broke down? <laughs> yeah. The fan bus. We saw a fan bus in the parking lot when, when we left after the Giants game. Nothing else in the parking lot except the fan bus. And uh, it has gone. Yeah. Never saw it. Mystery. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll talk to On you guys <laughs> during the week. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Farub, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.